I imagine when, when watching tracks back, mm. it must be quite surreal, really, to see experiences that you played out in real life reimagined on the big screen. Mm. It is surreal. That's exactly the right word. Um, sort of strangely dislocating. Um, because it's, you know, on the one hand it's my story and on the other hand it's got nothing to do with me, if you know what I mean. So, yes, it's pretty peculiar. Um, the most disorienting was when I went out on a shoot um, and it was the first time I was with them on the shoot and they were shooting on the, uh, the last scene at the ocean. and. Then I see Mia in the, dif in the distance with camels wearing my clothes, sort of looking like me. She'd even morphed my legs. I don't know how she did that. Um, and it was really quite emotional, oddly emotional. Yeah, yeah. strange, very strange. Because um, I, I've only ever done, uh, wanted to be filmed with someone who oh. had a film based around them. And yeah. they said that they couldn't watch it. They were crying at moments that weren't even upsetting to anyone to else, anyone just else. to them. Yeah. Do, do you find that happened as, as well with you? Well, yes, I don't cry, but, um, but there is this, w w yes, as I say, it's, an, it's emotional. And you don't know quite why it's emotional because, you know, it's not me. It's not my story. It is my story. It's not my story. I don't know. Are you able and to? And of course, you know, I think that the film did stay quite close to the book. Um, but, you know, I, I understand the, the problems that you have to solve in a book are very different to the problems you have to solve in a film. So I wasn't expecting the film to be a direct interpretation. Um, so there are moments when it differs quite a lot from reality, from what actually happened. But even so, there's something similar enough to be quite emotional. Uh, when you see that there are parts that, that differ from, from mm. what actually happened, mm. uh, do you get quite protective over what really happened? Do, does it, did it for, not frustrate you, but were, were we ever quite cautious about them using their artistic license <clears throat> in that regard? No, I mean, I've written a film myself, so I know that certain things have to be done. Um, and also it's a long time since the book was written. It was published in 80, 81, I can't remember. So there's been enough, you know, there's been a few decades there to, to not feel so attached to the book. Um, so really, I, I just had to trust them, and I did trust them. I trusted Emil instantly, to, to honour the book and to do the best job as artists that they possibly could. And I think a lot of writers are quite naive about their books being interpreted to film, um, that protectiveness. Because really, as I said, you have to solve different problems. Um, but still, I'm very pleased with the film, really genuinely pleased. Of course, uh, your, your, your journey uh, across the Australian desert has not only spawned, obviously, the book and, now, and the movie, and mm. you, you've come almost kind of a symbol of feminism in the process. If someone went back and told you that when you were just <laughs> about to set off, I imagine you wouldn't have quite believed it. I wouldn't have believed any of this could have been possible because the point of the journey for, m for me was completely personal and private. I'd had no intention of writing about it. Um, I didn't think any, why would anyone be interested? Which was probably a bit naive of me at the time. Um, what I find ironical, paradoxical about it is that the more I tried to disappear beneath the radar, um, the more private I wanted to be, the more people wanted to know about it or wanted to be involved with it somehow. And, um, and that's continued. So now, I mean, it's sort of extraordinary to me that it's still got legs, this story. Because, uh, I mean, in, in, in the actual, in the movie, the impression mm. we get is that she, it's a real passion project and she's even, ha mm. um, I say she, you yes. <laughs> even have to be a, kind of convinced to write an article in the first place. Mm. And so, I mean, bearing that in mind. Mm. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I, that's absolutely true. And when I ag agreed to, to Geographic having the story, I felt like I'd sold my soul completely. Um, so I was highly ambivalent about that because I knew 
instinctively that it would start to take the journey from me and turn it into something else. And if the journey had any point at all, it was to be the subject of my own life and not an object. Mm. So poor old Rick Smolin, the photographer, I was quite resentful of having to um, sort of have him on board, even though he didn't come out very often. He came out three times altogether. But for me, he symbolised everything that I was trying to escape from. Because yeah, I mean, I was going to say, cause bear, bearing that in mind, did you have any apprehensions when they approached you about making a movie? Because I feel like I got, well, I get the impression that the whole publicity around mm. it wasn't ever your no, your, your no, thing. I didn't want it. Um, well, in fact, I mean, it's hard to remember back, but um, because the publicity after the event was so unexpected and I was completely unprepared for it. Um, when a publisher in London asked me to write the book, because I'd never written before, you know, had, had no intention of writing about it, and I thought, okay, if I write a book, it'll be like throwing a bone to the wolves, and the wolves can have the book and I'll be left alone and to get on with my life. Um, and then the book becomes a huge bestseller um, and then people want to make films about it. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, but now, of course, I'm completely delighted because it, it is a long time ago and there are worse things to be than a feminist icon, if that's what I am. <laughs> and I mean, Mia is, is fantastic in Isn't the role. Isn't she? And I, I mean, you must have been absolutely thrilled that, that she was on board for this. I'd, all, I'd wanted her and um, completely delighted in all sorts of ways. I think she's fantastic actress really like you know up there but she's also a dear person and um, and there's a friendship there that's really quite precious to me she's like a daughter or something and did you spend much time together so was she ever trying to kind of study your mannerisms and no uh, it was interesting I mean initially when the film was mooted I remember um, I had lunch with Judy Davis um, that was many, many years ago in the early 80s. And I remember her copying everything I was doing. I'd pick up a glass, she'd pick up a glass. Um, Mia not a, didn't apparently watch me at all. Um, rather the opposite. She's quite um, uh, not shy, I would say reserved, introverted like me. But somehow, after that three days we spent together, she got me um, in quite a remarkable way. Mm. And uh, did you keep in touch with, with anybody from your, in, from your travels, from, from those that preceded it to, to those you might have met along it? Oh, yeah. Well, the Aboriginal friends, certainly. Um, Eddie, Eddie and his family were important to me, so I'd go out there whenever I could. Um, so I sort of inherited his family. He died back in <clears throat> 92, I think. Um, and old friends from Alice Springs I still see, yeah. Ooh, so just finally, what does the future hold for you now? What, what have you got? <laughs> what, what, what's, what's, gonna ha what's happening now? Well, I'm meant to be finishing a book um, and my publishers are getting extremely worried because the film has kind of interrupted mm -hmm. everything. But that's my next project, uh, to finish a book and then hopefully never have to write again. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's much Pleasure. appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.